We're back. We're here. This time though, we haven't got any guns on the bench. Uh, we've got a selection of gears. Um, I thought I'd do a little video just to sort of have a little comparison of the different types of gears uh, we get for airsoft use. Uh, some you might be familiar with, um, some maybe not so. Uh, so today's going to be a bit of a school day, so it'll either be the most boring video you've ever seen, or you'll get the answers you've been looking for. Uh, now I have got a set of 18 to 1 gears, 16 to 1 gears, 14 to 1 gears, 32 to 1 gears, and some helical sets, some 1 to 300s and some 1 to 200s. Because one thing I always found was a very, very difficult uh, thing to find information on these compared to the rest of them. Now the rest of them most of us understand. We know obviously that the 18 to 1 gears are your standard set that you find in most of your guns. And as those number at the front gets smaller, they get quicker, 16 to 1 and 14 to 1 and so on. And if we go the other way, you get your slower but much more torquey gears, 32 to 1. But where do these fit in? So we're going to do a quick video. Now if we look down here, I've got them set up in the gearboxes. Um, so we'll, I've put little white lines on them. So we can see how many rotations the motor needs to do here to turn this one round once. So we'll do that on a few of these just to see how they compare. And we're going to put these in as well so we can see how they compare in terms of their speed versus the rest of them. So we will start with the 18 to 1 set because this is what we expect to find in just a normal AEG as standard. Uh, so you'll see how I've got a little white line here and we're going to use the tappet blade gear here, this little bobble, as our reference for this doing one full turn. So I'm going to rotate this and we're going to see how many times this goes round. Ready? about six and a quarter turns that took. So the motor has to take in this gear six and a quarter times for it to complete one complete cycle on this gear. Let's look at the next one. Same thing for the 16 to one. We're gonna use the same markings, same point of rotation on this one. So that took five and three quarter turns. Right, we'll swap these ones out. Because those were the 16 to 1. So we'll swap them out. And we'll put in a set of 14 to 1. This is 14 to 1. That took four and three quarter turns. This is the 32 to 1 gear set. Now there's a couple of things to watch out for if you plan to use these. Um, one of them is for the reason that I've had to get another gearbox shell for this demo purely because that will not fit and function in the shells we were using for the other gears it does not turn it's locked now the reason for that is the lower part of this gear you see it protrudes around the back there because of the gear ratio it makes that rear part of the gear larger and equal to the size of that of the sector area for the piston. So that means one, you need to be careful with gearbox compatibility and two, if you use a piston you need a half tooth piston so that it only meets up with the half that you want it to. 
So yeah, there you go. Ten and a half turns. Now for the helical gears. They're called helicals because of the way that they are cut on some of the gear teeth. Uh, they're at an angle rather than being straight as you can see there. There you go. So they're at an angle rather than being straight which gives you more kind of tooth coverage on each kind of as each tooth meshes um, so that's really where they come from that is a one to three hundred set so let's see how that compares in rotations um, to the rest of them about eight and three quarters, perhaps just over. This set is the one to 200. Again, helicals. So it's about seven and three quarters. If you've made it this far in the video, hopefully that means you're not bored and hopefully it means you haven't fallen asleep. Um, in summary then, I've put all of the gears in order from the torquiest all the way through to the fastest. So we got 32 to 1, 1 to 300, 1 to 200, 18 to 1, 16 to 1 and 14 to 1. So hopefully that is in some way helpful for you. Um, just a point though, uh, a little side note, just by coming down this end, the further down you does not necessarily mean faster rate of fire. That could be limited by your motor. I've seen builds that I've done and had a go at where we've taken maybe an 18 to one out of a gun left it on its standard motor and tried to go to 14 to one, but because the original motor has not been talky enough, uh, to handle the spring under the pressure that these give because that is going to cause more pressure at the motor end uh, because of the gearing on it that's actually been slower than those gears until the motor was upgraded so the further down this way you come you really need more high torque motors especially if you're dealing with big springs just as a side note so hopefully that's been useful uh, and that's given you a few answers that maybe you couldn't find elsewhere. Um, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Couldn't possibly finish the video without putting at least one gun in it. This is a G&G &G SIG 552 uh, that has been built using helical gears, at the 1 to 200s. Um, now just to show you the trigger response on this, even though these gears are slightly slower than the original gears that were in it, uh, because we've upgraded the standard motor to a faster, more torquey one, the trigger response is still very, very good. Now that's not using anything like MOSFETs or pre-cocking or anything fancy like that. That is just standard trigger contacts and wiring on an 11.1 volt LiPo battery.